Hello Horror Hands, today's video is brought to you by a pre-mixed can of gin and tonic. <laughs> so, so this will be my most middle class video to date. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about, if I can get my thoughts in some semblance of order, about The Witch, a New England folk tale. Once in a while a movie comes along that just is so new and refreshing and an awful lot of the preamble to this I've got off my chest in in a previous vid a video called it's not horror so we can talk just about this the probably the, the the most notable thing right off the top of the list to say about this is it's from a first time writer director Roger Eggers, who produces something of this quality. This, the cover is, is not representative of the film, although, <laughs> which is a strange thing to say because this image pretty much does feature uh, in the film. But what, what you get is a period piece of, of such meticulous and intricate detail that an awful lot of people seem to have written it, written it off as not really a horror movie, not really scary. The brief thumbnail description, because I don't want this to be spoilerific, because heaven knows there, there might actually be people watching this thinking about thinking about seeing the flick. Um, it's set in 1630. It follows a family who not too long ago moved from England uh, to avoid the, the religious persecution there. They're the, they're the Puritans uh, coming over to, to America. We all know that, that story. But this particular family gets banished from the community it settles with right at the top of the movie. We don't know the details of why. We know that there was some theological disagreement, leaving me to suspect that the patriarch, the father of this family, was even more hardline Christian than the Puritans that he travelled uh, across with, which gives you really the starting point of the vice, the, <laughs> the emotional, spiritual, mental vice that all of the characters in this family are trapped in and it just tightens and tightens and tightens. The unflinching rigidity of an extreme religious system and religious beliefs. The family banished from the community moves some miles away and sets up a farm on the edge of a wood and therein begins the folk tale the fairy tale because in the woods is a witch or oh, is there if you've seen uh, the trailer and the like you'll know that very early on the eldest daughter of the family who's charged with caring for the youngest a newborn called Samuel takes him to the edge of the woods and Samuel disappears and the film is very ex very explicit in telling you that a witch has stolen the baby and <clears throat> the film lays out its stall and it's called The Witch and we're going to see this uh, uh, puritanical Christian God-fearing family uh, put under the machinations of a Satan worshipping witch but very, very, very quickly after the scene where Samuel's taken, I found myself thinking, and you might, depending on how, how deeply you like to interrogate your films, I, if the text submits to it, I like to go, I like to go as deep as a film will allow me to, and the deeper, the better. This is why, this is why I'm a huge fan of David Lynch. People who watch this film, who want this film to be one thing or another thing, and are having arguments on the internet about uh, about who's the witch, is there even a witch? Really, the mind boggles as to how <laughs> how they'd approach a film like Mulholland Drive or Inland Empire 
I think they may just have aneurysms and uh, a line from Hudson Hawk just popped into my head. Drown in the saliva of their own nervous breakdowns. I can't take credit for that line. It's probably the best thing in Hudson Hawk. Uh, but back, back to the witch. Very, very quickly after the baby is snatched, you find yourself thinking, well, hang on a minute. Is that, is that really what happened? How, how, how is it possible when someone's playing peekaboo with a baby for someone to come, to come out of the woods, take the kid and go back into the woods within the space of a couple of blinks of an eye? If you really must subscribe to the school of thought that there's a witch in the woods, then you, you can explain it. It's magic, and you'll be you'll be more than satisfied with that explanation. <laughs> the film is trickier than that, much trickier than that. So I intellectually leant forward at that point and thought to myself, okay, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to trust everything that is displayed on screen as being the actual fact of the reality of what happened. And I'm not even sure that there is a witch. But then again, throughout the rest of the movie, one of the joys of it, it's like, it's like the satanic version of Cluedo, or at least it was the first time I watched it. I changed my mind about uh, who the witch of the title was while I was watching this movie at least a half dozen times, maybe even double that. Oh, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely the daughter. No, there's definitely a witch in the words. Oh, it's the twins. Maybe it's the mother. Maybe it's the father. Oh my God, it's so tense. And if you really, if you buy into this scenario, then the tension just ratchets up and up and you, and you know the setting and you know just the merest hint of devil worship or the merest suspicion of devil worship will cast a shadow on someone to the extent that their life will be in danger. Something uh, a character will say in jest or throw away, you find yourself thinking, oh my God, don't, don't say that. If, if, if someone else catches wind that you've said that, you could be burnt alive just for joking about that. If, and you're going to have to forgive me this awful pun a bit, but the, the reason the film sucks you in and the reason is really slow burn, and it's a really slow burn, there's nothing will jump out from behind doors at you in this movie. Nothing will ooga booga booga from the shadows. This isn't The Conjuring. This is a different kind of movie with its, with its own pace uh, and its own tone, and it just slowly turns the wheel. It is a vice that compresses you into this world and then traps you there. And then once you're trapped, it just remorselessly squeezes the life out of you, out of the characters that are living in this scenario. And the reason you can get sucked into it so easily, here comes the pun, the devil really is in the detail in this movie. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be reading from a piece of paper. Uh, the clothes in the film were made from authentic hand-woven cloth. 17th century musical instruments were used for the soundtrack. The soundtrack is amazing and dissonant and, and weird and atonal. And it's just the cherry on top of a cake for making you feel increasingly more uneasy throughout this entire movie. Uh, Period tools were used to construct the farmhouse. Uh, the film's shot in, in more or less natural light, just adding to the sense of realism. Uh, the director, uh, Robert Eggers, met with 17th century agricultural experts and colonial historians. He poured through religious diaries, letters, Puritan prayer manuals of the time, an awful lot of the dialogue is taken, lifted verbatim from diaries of people who lived at the time. 
So just like watching Shakespeare on stage or on film, you very quickly get into the cadence and rhythm of the language and that's fine. Every single actor in this movie excels. Uh, these, the mother and father, these are, these, these are not uh, glamorous Hollywood leading men and leading ladies looks. These are, these are lived in careworn uh, faces. The, the children, the two twins, are absolute little shits and you will want to wring their necks. Uh, and whether that's a red herring or not, they're, they're, they're pitched beautifully like that. They're supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be that annoying. And Thomason, the, the eldest daughter, who's, I guess, the, the main focus of the film, is portrayed as this wonderfully delicate uh, period just on the budding verge of womanhood from, from childhood, which in any good fairy tale is, is the, the key point of absolute danger. If you've watched uh, A Company of Wolves, that entire film is a fairy tale setting about the danger of moving from childhood to womanhood. Uh, this film, uh, along with A Company of Wolves, made me think of while I was watching it. Red Riding Hood, Hansel and Gretel, Sleeping Beauty, so the Grimm's fairy tales, Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Uh, it made me think of uh, the McCarthy uh, communist trials, religious extremism that's going on today and, and displacement because of uh, religious wars. Uh, it reminded me in turn of, of The Evil Dead, the Wicker Man, Blood on Satan's Claw, The Blair Witch Project, and Lars von Trier's Antichrist. I had an awful lot of fun imagining that uh, the farmhouse in this movie, this movie could could act as a weird double bill prequel to, to The Evil Dead. It's very, very easily acts as a prequel to Lars von Trier's The Antichrist or The Blair Witch Project. It's a, it's a nice little fun game to imagine that the woods and the, and the cabin, the, log, uh, the farmhouse, in this movie, you're on the same site as the cabin in the woods as Evil Dead, if you like, or near the woods where uh, the Blair Witch Project happened many centuries later, or the cabin where uh, <coughs> uh, Willem Dafoe and I've blanked on her name, where they go in in, in Antichrist. It, it's actually a great double bill fit for Antichrist, but that would be a really uncomfortable double bill viewing. Ultimately, I've written in here, the viewer will bring their own needs and desires to this film. Some will see an unabashedly supernatural film about a family under supernatural attack from a witch, and that's fine. Others will see a film uh, uh, about a fracturing family broken under the weight of grief, starvation, uh, and uh, faltering under the unflinching yoke of unachievable spiritual expectation. Some will see a film about communal paranoia, hysteria, and hallucination brought on uh, either by religious fervor or by ergot poisoning, which is which is also suggested in the film, very subtly. All of these things could be hallucinations. I don't want to talk too much more about it. There are some, there are some nightmarish images in this film, and there are some there are some things that will stay with you for a long, long time, and that's the power of this film. The goat on the farm, Black Phillip, being absolutely one of them. Uh, and that's the power of films like this. Like I was trying to suggest in my earlier video entitled It's Not Horror. Films like this, films like Rosemary's Baby or The Wicker Man, uh, films like The Babadook. Uh, and it follows. Don't have the popcorn in the air shock moments. They don't have the shriek out loud moments. But there's a there's a subtlety and a much more insidious nature in play uh, in films like this that will creep under your skin and into your subconscious that will have you thinking about them a long, long time after you would normally be thinking about some hanged none in a James Wan film. I've got nothing against James Wan films whatsoever. I'm just trying to compare chalk and cheese. If you've had time in the past for The Babadook and it follows, if you've had time for uh, The Wicker Man uh, and uh, Rosemary's Baby and things of that ilk, 
please make a date with the witch. You will not be disappointed. I promise you. It's it's creepy, it's eerie, and it's not it's not the usual fast food horror that we eat more often than not, are served more often than not. This is this is real gourmet stuff and That crow, that crow, man, that raven. Oh my God. Well, enjoy it. If you've seen it, I hope you enjoy it. It's it's one to experience again and again, I think. And I think each time I watch it, I might have a different idea about what's going on. And certainly films that can work on those levels, films that can have two completely contrasting explanations to them, sitting comfortably side by side, in my head at the same time are uh, the kind of the kind of nourishment that we far too often crave but aren't given but every once in a while a film like the witch comes along and soak up that nourishment guys because i think it'll probably be a while before we get a meal like that again <laughs>